All right, I was uh, thinking about sway bars, and I kind of modeled up one for myself, just for my own good. And after I did so, I was like, well, maybe I should share this. Maybe some other people would get uh, a little bit of help out of this. But I made this sway bar here out of uh, a paper clip. Um, you can see, just bent it. And then I'm using these to represent the the unsprung weight of the car, so the hub, the wheel, and such. Uh, and then I have this little plastic piece that I'm just going to use as sort of the chassis. And then for you guys, I'm going to use it modeling off of a turn, just for your own reference. So turning a right, here's the inside of the turn and the outside of the turn. And so when I model off these wheels, um, you'll see exactly what's happening when the car goes into a turn. So I'm going to put this in these little holes right here. It's actually a little bit of a chore, so I am going to turn off the camera. They're not quite in right now. And I'll come back. Alright. As the, um, so now demonstrating the car, I'm going to put this, normally the chassis would be sitting on the top right here. What will happen is the car, as it's going through this turn, is going to want to lean to the outside of the turn. Now when this happens, it's pressing down essentially on the left wheel. And as it does so, you can see that it lifts the right. That is how the sway bar prevents the leaning of the car, simply by it's a sort of a levered action, it's a torsional action. Um, as this actually flexes upwards, um, it causes the inside tire to lift. Once you're lifting your inside tire, your sway bar is no longer effective. Getting a larger sway bar will no longer help you uh, <clears throat> in preventing that rolling action of the body because it's already doing as much as it can because that wheel and hub assembly is already being lifted off the ground. So, in short, that's a sway bar in action.